Helps if I turn on my mic. Oh man, that's the second time I've done that. Welcome everybody. Um, we've been here and there and not here and not there for um, a couple of weeks. Um, as you can understand, things are kind of up and up in the air. And so uh, we did a, a short little stream to actually close out season one of uh, Let's Make Some Games last week. So if you missed it, um, check it out. When I switch over here in a second, you'll see the link to our YouTube. You should probably already know because you're probably watching us right now. Um, so we were able to finish up our game, and it uh, looks pretty good. We only did one level um, because it would be pretty boring to watch me do basically the same thing, but for second and third levels. Um, if you think we should do it, then we can do that for another season. Although season three, we're hoping, will be in when we get our schools back open and, and kids back on site, and we can actually go out to your school sites and have you guys be making the game. So you guys telling us what we should um, make and kind of having you guys be a part of it. That'd be awesome. So um, where we are now is um, I'm in my home right now, I'm trying to work from home every day, as a lot of your teachers are, um, and as a lot of your principals and vice principals and everybody are. Um, but thankfully, because of the way this all works, I'm able to just kind of take it with me and we're able to keep going. So we are going to do something different for this season. It's likely going to be about five episodes. Um, we're going to do them every Tuesday and Thursday. So today and then Thursday, and then next Tuesday, next Thursday, and then probably next Tuesday at a minimum. Um, I have a very interesting announcement to make. And so um, as many of you may be aware of, we had to cancel Play Co Compete because of the current coronavirus issue. It's just not safe. Um, but we we're going to find a way to bring it to you in the fall, possibly. And if you're a sixth grader, we're going to invite you back as a seventh grader. But I wore my Play Co Compete shirt. I got to lift up my beard today so that I can announce something very exciting. Something that we had in the works um, probably was gonna we were going to announce next year, but I think we could all use a little bit of good news. Um, so, or Playco compete next year. It is not a coincidence or a mistake that we are gonna be going over Mario Maker over the next couple of days because next year Mario Maker design is going to be a part of Play Code Compete. So those schools that have switches with Rocket League, we're going to be supplying you with a copy of Mario Maker for each of your switches. And you'll have a whole separate team. So you have your Rocket League team over here. You'll have a whole separate group of kids that will get a chance to design games in Mario Maker. And you're going to submit those games. And then we're also going to have a competition of playing games. If you've ever seen a Mario Maker championship, uh, Nintendo did one to launch Mario Maker 2 last year. Yeah, last year. Um, I think it was right before E3. They're awesome. They are nail-biting to watch one versus one as you guys race all the way through to the end. So if that is of interest to you, you are very lucky to be here today and over the next couple of weeks because you're going to get a crash course in level design. Now, what's cool about this is even if you don't have Mario Maker, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is in terms of game design goes for everything. So if you design in Scratch or Unity or, or RPG Maker even, you can learn a lot from what I'm going to talk about today. But I'm going to take you through a lot of what the people who make your favorite games have to think about. It may not be exactly what they think about, especially depending on what type of game it is. But that you don't just have your game window here and you just drop things and then play it and see how that goes and then do it again. There's some of that. You can absolutely do some of that. But um, what most game designers do is they they get down to like the really nitty gritty and they fiddle with it and they try to figure out what's going on so i'm going to show you kind of how to do that today everything you're going to learn today thursday next week and on it's going to help you out if you join our mario maker uh tournament for playco compete next year so if you're here you're hearing it first before we've announced it to any other kids in the entire district mario maker for playco compete 2021 for Playco Compete 2020, we will find something for you guys to do in the fall. But for spring of next year, the normal Playco Compete time, Mario Maker. Um, let's get to it. So, uh, Mario Maker. Um, I'm not going to do too. Well, I don't need to go into my settings here. I'm not going to do too much of a. Uh, uh, 
jeez, just fiddle in here. Too much of a, here's how you do Mario Maker, all that. There's hundreds, if not thousands of videos out there for that. That's not what I'm gonna take you through today. By the way, there's our YouTube channel. So follow us so you know when we're live and help in um, doing this. What I'm gonna take you through is what you need to keep in mind when you're designing. So today what we're gonna cover is movement, okay? That's all we're gonna cover. It's gonna feel a bit boring. I hope you stay with me through this, but we're gonna talk about movement. A lot of people, when they design, they come in, they're like, okay, I'm gonna get rid of these blocks here and I'm gonna make you jump over. Well, odds are, if you didn't plan it out, that's either an easy jump or a difficult jump. Odds are too easy or too difficult. We talked a lot about that back in season one. You cannot make your games too difficult. People get frustrated, throw their controller, run away. You can't make it too easy. Oh, you're bored. Sorry, and I just like fall asleep and don't even want to play your game, okay? You got to find that sweet spot. So there's some thing, things you got to figure out first. So one of the things you have to figure out is just what movement looks like in your game. So you're going to see this is a real boring, I don't, what do you even call it a game? Oh, I made it. All right. Boring, right? But here's some things to pay attention to. In Mario, I can run, like walk, or I can sprint. And you can see I can go faster. That's something to keep in mind. You already know about that, but I'm going to show you why that's important here in a second. The other thing you want to look at is you want to look at the actual square, okay? I can't do it because every time I point to that square and I move, it comes to it. But I want you to look at a square starts here and a square ends here, okay? So I'm going to move Mario to this one right here, the one that's right after the tree. I'm going to move him right up to it. This is something you need to be aware of. I'm going to get him right as close as possible. One of the reasons why... What is it now? 35 years, over 35 years later. No, I think it's almost, it's a little less than 35 years. Mario's still so popular. Yeah, it's a clever character. Yeah, it's clever design. But it's also because it's something called pixel perfect jumping. You can get down to the very little pixel and move Mario so that you can time your jump. That's why, um, that's why you have a lot of uh, um, people who play Mario play it competitively because they want they want to see how quickly they can do things so you got a lot of speedrunners who play mario because it's so precise or you have the people who make those ones where like you look at them and you're like i don't even know how you're doing that well they're able to do that because they've made a precise game so we're going to actually count how many steps it takes to get across a square and that's going to be important later on so a normal one see i, I even did too many because i can go just a little bit one two three four and it looks like it's about four. If I was to go another one, then if that block wasn't there, I would have fallen. So that's a way for me to see exactly how much it is. And in fact, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take this block out here and I'm gonna take this one out here and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna play my game and we're gonna see if it truly is four. One, two, three, four. Can I do a fifth one? No. Four. That's something to keep in mind. Every time I move four steps, I've moved a block. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, jump, oh, I almost fell right into that. Jumping. I'm gonna use these mountains here to judge my jump. I'm gonna start my jump at that first mountain and I'm gonna end it and see where it ends. But I'm gonna get a running start because nobody really does this kind of a jump. Only I do it when I get to like a block right in the middle by itself and I get, super nervous i jump move jump move but most people who are really good at these games you just run and jump so i'm going to jump right when i get to the edge and stop two things i noticed one i stopped a little bit halfway through that second mountain two you don't jump and then stop right there you jump and kind of walk a little bit so you got to keep in mind when you make your jumps i'm going to land about right there and I'm gonna go a little bit further. So let's count the blocks. So we see that I jumped right at the start of the mountain. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's call it eight. Let's try it. Eight seems to be the largest amount of blocks that can be missing and still be able to make that jump. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna remove. I've already moved one group of blocks. So I'm gonna remove, no, get out of there. Move. Oh, I don't think it likes me having it there. All right, just move there, okay. 
one, two, oh, I need my eraser. Two, three, four, five, six. Welcome to counting with Mr. Robertson. Seven, eight. All right. Now, let's pick up Mario and bring him back over here. Come on. Doesn't want to come with me. Got to press and hold. All right. Now, if I did this right, I should be able to run and jump and clear that path. Not like the sprint. Not the super fast. Just the regular jump. Now, let's see. Remember, I pushed it. I said, mm, let's call it eight. Let's not call it eight. Let's call it seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's try that. Come back here. Seven blocks. Let's call it six. There we go. Now notice that I kind of fly off a little bit. So if I was, now I know I can make that jump. If I was to say, all right, expert, not only do you have to make that jump, but you have to not slide off the edge. I have to ask myself if that's even possible. One of the best ways to figure it out, try it yourself. Let's say that wasn't there. Could I do that? No, I can't. Let's try it again. All right, let's try it again. Didn't even get close that time. So already I can see five is kind of pushing it. You got to be pretty good and time your jump just right at the last minute. And it looks like that one. So it looks like if I'm going to jump, what did I say it was? Five, no, it's six. Six blocks over, only giving me one block to land on is extremely challenging. Possibly not even possible. Let's try it again. So now I'm realizing if the if I give if Mario I did it before I fell off. I did it, credit, I did it. I need to now know as I build my jumps that if I'm gonna push it to the limit of what Mario can jump, which is six. Not sprinting, just the normal one. I need to know that six means I'm likely gonna have enough speed coming in that one block to try to stay on is going to be very difficult. I'm going to think to myself, that's probably something, a move I'm going to ask somebody to do either right before a checkpoint or right after a checkpoint. But I'm not going to have you go halfway through, then do an impossible jump, and then have to go all the way back to a checkpoint. You don't want to frustrate your people too much. There we go. Oh, see, I always overcorrect. So doing that, probably not going to make many friends. Now, there's also something, Mario, where you can just not do it, right, I guess? And Mario, where you can run or not jump. We'll blame it on the controller. I kind of really want to blame that one on the controller. There we go. Now I can't make it at all. I'm frustrated with my game before I've actually even started making a game. It's supposed to be just the simple day of just making it. He's having a hard time responding. So I need to keep in mind that if I'm going to do six, then that one by itself, probably not that great. Now, that's for just normal running. Okay. Now there's also the speed running, which is you press and hold down Y or you press and hold down X, and then you can jump even further and probably can make that all the way over like that. Okay. That I made pretty easily. So let's count up those blocks. That's uh, one, two, three... Four, five, six, that's nine. Okay, so let's do this again. Whoops, let's do this again, but now let's take out nine. And we'll give myself a good run and start here. One, two. Three. Let me go. Two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. All right, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, if I did this right, nope, it didn't, oh good, it gave me a safety. Now I have to consider two things. Do I have enough time to get up enough speed? And can I make that jump? I made it. And I made it with about a block left to spare. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take out a 10th block. So all I'm doing today is I'm just learning how Mario responds. Learning the limits of what he can do. I might be able to do 11 blocks. I obviously didn't do well on that one. I'm going to take out an 11th block. Just pushing it. I'm going to push this game to see how much it can actually do. And see what I can get away with. Because when I make the game, I want to know what my limits are. Nope, not that one. Now you want to jump. Oh, just barely. Okay. Now, I definitely didn't make that one. Now the question is, how much room do I need to give myself to sprint? So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to remove my sprint the blocks that I can use to sprint. I know I have too many already, so I'm gonna just see what it, what's the minimum amount I can get away with. Uh, let's do three. There's not a chance three can be right. I really don't think that could be correct, but let's try it. I'm gonna start by holding Y down first. That way I've got my run activated, my sprint I should say activated. I'm gonna get as close to the edge as possible. It <laughs> just run right off the ledge. All right, let's try this again. Nope. Three is not enough to build up speed. So if I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna make somebody jump 11 blocks, I have to give them more than three blocks to build up speed. Let's try five. Let's try jumping. Close, closer. Looks like it might be six. So it looks like six might be the minimum I have to give myself to go. Let's try it again. I'm gonna give that one another try. I don't feel like I got a good run on that. Chat saying five, you think it's five? I tried five and I wasn't able to do it. Maybe I just didn't do it right. Let me try, if I can do it with six, then we'll drop it down to five. I'm still not making it with six. Okay, let's try seven. And then if that works, then we'll go back to six and see if I can get that to work. Again, this isn't designing a game. We'll get to that in the next couple of weeks. What we're getting to now is just things you gotta practice and know about a game. You gotta know how to control a game. All right, seven works. Or don't jump at all. All right, now let's go back to six. So seven seems to definitely be work. Now let's go back to six and see. It might just be because I'm not good at Mario games. I like designing Mario games. I am not good at playing them. That's why I kind of bumped. Ooh, six worked. Not back the other way. but uh, That's kind of a bummer with Mario for me is that um, in order to post your game online you have to be able to prove that it's beatable and i make these games and i'm like i know i can beat it i just can't make that jump for some reason and usually i just hand it off to my son and he beats it for me and then uh i get to upload it so mm. i feel like it's mocking me no don't start there start back here I think five's too short. So six technically works, but um, as you saw, six is like really, really pushing it. So yeah, seven is probably a nice fair. <laughs> this is gonna frustrate me today. Seven is probably like a nice fair amount of blocks to put in, but six technically works. I've only been able to make it work ah, twice now. So six works. And it also depends on when you, um, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see it. It also depends on when you jump. So if you jump, let's see if I can get it to move over so you can move back this way. Remember I said Mario's pixel perfect. If you jump right at that, right at that last pixel there, you could probably make that jump. But if you wait until that last pixel and you miss it by like 
a millisecond, you just drop. Like I've been doing a million times. I told you, I'm not that great at Mario games. So you just drop, okay? So things we learned today, if you're doing a normal jump, not racing or whatever, you gotta give yourself a minimum of <laughs> six blocks. Running, seven. Or I'm sorry, running, you can go 11 blocks. So if you're sprinting, you can go five more blocks than if you're running normal, okay? So that's something to keep in mind, just a good tip to know. Hey, if you're gonna sprint through the game, you can sprint and jump over five more blocks than if you were running. We learned also that if you are sprinting, you need a minimum of six, but seven is the key. Seven is the one that makes it seem a little bit more doable. In terms of uh, running, not sprinting, the normal run, you don't build up speed running. You just go your normal speed. So technically you should be able to do it with just two blocks. So let's do this. And if you're just joining us, we announced at the beginning of the stream that next year, spring 2021, Play Code Compete will have Mario Maker as part of the uh, esports. So if you're on, if you're um, on an esports team for Rocket League, it'll be on that. But then also we'll be opening it up for kids to design their own Mario Maker levels that we'll judge, and then we're going to have uh, speedrun competitions as well. Jump too late. Okay, let's try it again. Didn't jump at all. We'll try it again. See, I'm waiting. I'm waiting too long to jump. I love that it shows you your little ghost of what you've done. All right. Maybe you need a minimum of three blocks. I thought you could do it with just two. Maybe I'm just not good. There's always that possibility. That's usually what I default to. I think if I wait, yeah, cause see I'm launching at maybe like the second to last pixel. So it might be three. So let's drop in a third one here and let's see how that goes. Yeah, well now three seems generous. Whoops, no, let's go back. Let's take it away. Maybe I just wasn't good. No, I feel like three is right. Okay, so if you're running, you need three blocks and you'll be able to jump six. If you're sprinting, you need six to seven, likely seven, and you'll be able to run, you'll be able to jump 11. So, uh, ratios, I need three blocks to jump six. I need seven blocks to jump 11. So I need more than twice as many blocks to not go twice as far. So I need to keep that in mind. Does that make sense? So I can go this far with this many blocks and I can go a little bit further with considerably more blocks. So that's something to just keep in mind as you're making your games. If you're expecting somebody to be able to make this gigantic 10 block run, you've got to give them six or seven blocks to be able to time it, okay? Or else they'll run off the screen like I do. I'm gonna blame it on the controller. It's gotta be my pro controller. I don't use it very often. It's it's not happy with the fact that it's been in the, the back of my drawer for the past couple months. I need to just try and make a run. So I think I don't need to, I shouldn't have to sprint over that. I'm gonna see. <laughs> Someone's asking if you've ever wondered that, oh, I didn't give myself three, but the word bed looks like a bed very interesting yeah it does you have the b is like the headboard and then you have the e is like the bed and then you have the d is like the uh, footboard so i should be able to do a normal run here and make that jump made it i should be able to do a normal run here and make that jump make it and then i should be able to do a sprint and not make that one because I gave myself that very, very stingy six. I'm gonna give it a seven and let's go back to the beginning. If you remember correctly, I think there was a quicker way to get to the beginning of the drag. All right, 
So if I've calculated all the blocks right, it should be there, 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 sprint. All right, I'm just gonna try my sprint from here. I'm gonna cheat. How early did I jump? Oh, wow, way, way too early. I was already mid jump before I even got to that third to last pixel. I was joking before about blaming the controller, but I seriously feel it's got to be the controller at this point. Woo! I did it. So, <clears throat> I'm very proud of myself. What we've done here is we have timed it out perfectly. That is exactly, actually that's probably a little more than what you need. Exactly what you need to make a normal jump. Exactly what you need to make a normal jump. You can do a little pole vault jump here so you don't stop here. And if you sprint and jump at the right time, you can see I'm not jumping here. If I'm here at that point, that means I probably jumped right about there. You're able to make it. If I was to post this, it basically would be like, hey, here's the basics of jumping. Practice this over and over again. So that's movement in Mario Maker. That's how to know how to run, how to jump. Remember we talked about how Mario can run four steps basically. So if I'm sprinting, let's do a sprint and a jump. And when I land, that's a really slow reaction. Let's try it again. He streaks about one and a half blocks. So if I'm doing a running jump, you can't give me just one block. Ugh, see, I need uh, three blocks alone wasn't enough. Let's try that again. Where's the, I'm trying to remember. There's gotta be like a quick way to like go back to the beginning and I forget what that is. So if you time it right, you can do that. Okay, so that's running. Now we're gonna talk about vertical movement going up. Very, very advanced. Um, just so I can track it, I'm going to choose a different block for that. Uh, and then I forget how to pull up my wheel. Not even close. Um, Sounds. All right, we're just gonna play with that. All right, now I'm gonna figure out how far up I can jump. Now I've got that already, I can see here. That was a normal, well, let's do it again because I think it was a normal jump, but let's find out if I'm doing a normal jump. Let's see if I do a normal jump, how far up I go. One, two, three, four, five, five and a half. So I'm gonna put a block, let's try it. I'm gonna see if I can get to a block that is six up. Let's give that a try. My data shows, uh-uh, there's no way you can do it, but I wanna push it. Push it to where I, I, I can't do it, then dial back and then I can't do it, and then dial back until I'm able to. Just a normal jump, can I get up six blocks high? No, I can see here visually, I can't do it. Cool. No, no, don't go back. I need to fix that. All right, so now let's take those, drop them out, and let's go to five high. Get over here. Let's try that. There we go. So I can do five high. Normal way. Okay. Let's now run and let's see how far, how far high, how high I can jump when I run. Mm, just a little bit higher. So that's really interesting to me that when it comes to the running and jumping, I can jump five more blocks than I could before. Just a normal run is six blocks, but a sprint run, a fast run is 11. 
But when it comes to jumping, I really can only jump about a half a... No, it's like a full block more. But it, no, actually, I think it's only like half a block more. So let's see. Let's add this here and let's see if I can get over it while running. Oops, I didn't have the run down or the sprint, whatever you want to call it. Now, see, it's half a block. So sprinting is going to have no bearing over how high I can jump. And I need to keep that in mind. But same rules are going to apply for things. So if, I, if, I, if somebody is sprinting and jumping on here, they're going to need three blocks. So I don't want somebody sprinting. I want them to jump high. And I know that you need, um, so I know you need five blocks, no, six blocks in order to make a normal jump, 11 to sprint. I don't want you to sprint here. So I'm gonna take these all away. I don't want you to be able to sprint across over to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, no one could sprint. In fact, I'm gonna make it look though like you might be able to. We just did the math. We know that there's no way you can make that jump. And if you're standing here, you need um, uh, six blocks is what you can do. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six? No, that's five. And we'll pull them there. This should theoretically be possible. So I'm going to sprint. I'm going to try to cheese the game. I'm going to say I'm going to ignore those big ones you're having me jump on. And I'm going to try to sprint and make it all the way over. It should be impossible. It's definitely impossible if you don't jump. I've got to get this B button looked at. Um, maybe I'll use... Whoops, that is not what I want. Maybe I'll use the A button this time since I'm having problems clearly. All right, come back over here. Let's go. Okay. That block's in your way anyway, but definitely you wouldn't be able to make that jump regardless. Now let's see, can I do just a normal jump and make it? Hopefully the skid is a little bit less because you're not doing the run and jump. I told you, I am not good at Mario Maker. You will never see me do a stream where I beat like these impossible levels. Apparently I'm doing one of those streams. I didn't think I was, but I guess I am. All right. There you go. A technically possible jump mathematically possible mathematically no way to make that more difficult because i did all the counting of all the blocks beforehand i spent the past half hour figuring that all out i now know exactly what jumps you can and can't do lengthwise and upward wise so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to do a little bit more we'll, we'll hang on here for a little bit more and we'll push it see how far we go one two three four five i know you can jump up that high it doesn't look like you should be able to, but I'm going to say you can, and I'm going to put it out. Let's put it there. Let's see what happens. I don't feel good about this. I'm going to B buttons working here. Really don't like it when gamers blame their inability to play on their technology, but I got to feel like my controller, well, that that's definitely on me. That was me. But I feel like my controller has it out to get me. I have a green cup. I didn't even notice that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's try it again. I really want to try this and see if this works. So we'll start there. Whoa, look at that great jump I made. <laughs> That's not going to work. Mm, I didn't do the standing jump. I forgot to do that. All right, let's figure out how far I can jump if I just stand and jump. Now, this is where you jump and then move a little bit. So instead of moving and, moving and jumping, this is the jump and move. 
I completely forgot to do this. See, that's that kind of a thing. So I'm gonna jump. Actually, I'm gonna come over here and get some clean data so it's not all cloudy. All right, jump. One, two, three, three. So this, there was no way I was ever gonna make that. I gotta put it down here. One, two, what is it? I can jump three high onto a block that's four above. So I can jump three high to a block that's four above. Oh, I also need to figure out how far I can jump to the side when I'm doing a standing jump. So let's come over here and try that. Because that's going to affect. Because I'm going to spend some of my energy going that way than I would just jumping straight up. Got to think. So it's still, no, now it's only about two. Um, well, I guess technically it's up on the third one. And I can only go over. Once I go over, let's see if I can get over here to where I can point. Once I get my, my apex, my highest part to be able to get onto that block, it's already very iffy to be able to get there. But once I go one block over, I already start falling down. So this block all the way up here that I have, I've got to fix that. That can't be that far over. Do you see how much time goes into just building? This is just a dumb course. This is, There's nothing fun about this. But I know that um, I'm going to have to plan this all out. All right, let's see. Can I do a standing jump from here? Yes. Cool. I'm going to see now if I can go one more higher. I know I can't. I'm just going to try it though. Move. Move, Mario. Move down here. Hey, I did it. All right. That's good to know. All right. So if I'm going to be doing a standing jump, there has to be one, two, three in between the blocks. All right. Standing jump, three in between the blocks. A running jump five blocks a sprinting jump we figured out you only gain half a block so if you're doing a sprinting jump you're not going to necessarily be jump, able to jump that much higher but that might be something to put into a game like a, uh, a puzzle where you have to do a run and jump then we also learned that if you want to do a run and jump lengthwise you can go 11 blocks if you wanted or like a sprint and jump if you want to do a normal run and jump you'll be able to go about uh six blocks um and then well, that's pretty much all we figured out so let's do this let's see if we can do this I know I can't sprint over that. It's too far. 11 is the max I can go for a sprint. I don't technically need to go on this top one. I could just go to those there, but I'm gonna try it just to prove to myself that I can do it. Good job. And then here I need to do a sprint and jump. Yes, I did it. All right, that is the basics of running and jumping in Mario. And hopefully you're able to see, this is why this game exists 35 or so, almost 35 years later, is because it is just, it's flawless. It's just an incredible game and it is so precise. And it was precise from the very first day it came out back in the eighties when I was only five years old. Um, it's it's timeless. It's the reason why we still play these games. And Mario Maker is awesome because it lets us play these games. Um, you know, it lets me play games that I played when I was five years old with my 10 year old. And, and back when my, you know, 15 year old was five years old, we were playing Mario Wii. And it was just something that we we're able to do because these games just are awesome. So if you missed the announcement at the beginning, let me remind you, lift up my beard so you can see Play Code Compete. It will come back. I'm thinking of calling it Play Code Compete Strikes Back. It will be back. We had to postpone it this spring. You all understand. But it will be back in um, the fall. So we will be bringing Play Code Compete back in the fall. If you are a sixth grader going, well, wait a minute. That means I'm in seventh grade. We'll invite you back. You earned it. You went through all the lessons and all that. For Play Code Compete 2021, we have announced mario maker mario maker still do rocket league 
in, a, in, in a conjunction with, together with, Rocket League, we are going to be doing Mario Maker for 2021 Play Code Compete. I was going to sit on that announcement all the way until November of next year, but I thought we could all use a little bit of good news right now. So, And um, if any of your schools have Nintendo Switches with Rocket League, we'll be giving all of them Mario Maker so they'll have access to it. You don't have to worry about you know anything like that. So next time, this Thursday, so no streaming tomorrow, we'll be on on Thursday. I'm trying to keep these about half hour, 40 minutes, so they're smaller for you guys. You guys got a lot going on, I know. Um, we're going to be doing, I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, Sale, you're in the eSports. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to join us in the fall. Um, I know you didn't get to play this year. Um, bummer. We'll find a way to get you guys on there. Um, next week, we're going to talk about, I think it's enemy design. How do you design enemies and, uh, or maybe it's obstacles. I got it written down somewhere. So we did all the mathematical stuff today. Whew, got that out of the way. Got all the ratios and the counting and all that done. So next time, Thursday, we can actually talk about building obstacles and everything in the way. So we're going to talk about obstacles. We're going to talk about enemies. We're going to talk about um, puzzle designs. How do you make puzzle versions of Mario Maker? Um, we're going to talk about storytelling. It's a side-scrolling game. It seems pretty simple, but you can actually tell stories with these games. And we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about bringing it all um, together. And again, if you don't have Mario Maker, these are just fun to watch. And again, if you join the esports next year for Mario Maker, um, these videos are going to give you a heads up, give you a bit of an advantage going in that maybe other kids don't have. So that's it for now. I want to do one plug for our Anaheim Elementary School District Minecraft server. Sent you all an email about it. I know it's a bit confusing how it all works. You do have to have Minecraft Java Edition, which unfortunately no Minecraft is on Chromebooks right now. But if you have Java, you can join our Minecraft server. If you're a student in our district, I emailed you all the details. I don't want to put it here for everybody to see. We only want our students on there. Um, so that is up and going. It's been kind of up and down and up and down, but I've gone in and rebuilt the database and restart server so it should be good. So um, join us on our Minecraft server and join us again this Thursday, 1.30 p.m. We're going to be making more Mario Maker levels. Have a great next couple days. I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you.